Okay, I'm just going to run through uh, the features and functions of this uh, Tektronix 7704A oscilloscope mainframe and its plugins. We've got two 7A26 dual trace vertical amplifiers, a 7B85 delaying time base, and the 7B80 uh, regular time base. Um, so, first, I'll just show you that all the input channels work. We have four channels the same on this scope. So, we'll start with the left one, channel one. I'll plug in this probe. This is a sort of random 10 to 1 probe that I've been using. I put that on the calibrator. If we set the uh, uh, oops, oh, wrong time base, there we go. Uh, there we have the trace on channel one, and I can run through the attenuator settings and they all do what they're supposed to. Trace gradually gets smaller as we work around them. Uh, the uh, adjustment of vertical sensitivity seems to be correct. And there we go, that's 0.4 volts, which is showing up as four divisions high on this. And we can work through all of those attenuator settings. So these attenuators, although the 7A26 is notorious for dirty contacts, these ones have all been cleaned and serviced by me, so uh, they've been good enough for me to use in my own lab. So it's the third channel, equally, dum 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 dum. We can see all of the attenuator settings working. Like that. And finally, channel two on the right hand plug in. Uh, oops, let's do that. There we go. We've got that going nicely. So, um, yeah, that's all the attenuator settings working. Uh, they have a switchable bandwidth, these uh, plugins as well, which is quite nice for uh, um, cleaning up the trace if you don't need the falls of 200 megahertz bandwidth, you can limit it to 20 megahertz. Uh, time bases work fine. I'll just demonstrate that using one trace here. It's a bit big. Um, that uh, we're on the right hand time base, time base B at the moment, it's lit up over here and I can run through all the way from uh, one nanosecond per centimetre all the way back down to five seconds per centimetre. They all work fine, we'll do the same on time base A, um, which uh, should be, if I brighten that up a bit, there we go. Uh, again, five seconds per centimetre all the way up to we put the magnifier on 10 nanoseconds per centimeter. You can't see it at the fast trace, the fast rates, because this is a you know one kilohertz waveform, so it's triggering uh, infrequently. Um, so time bases are working now because this has got a, a dual time base set up. You can do some clever stuff with it, uh, which I'll try and demonstrate now if I can remember how the knobs go. Uh, so we've got a trace there. Uh, this is just the one kilohertz-ish square wave from the calibrator. Uh, if we want to look at it in more detail, we can, for example, if we set, uh, we use the delaying time base, and we set time base B to start after delay by pressing this button, uh, and I adjust the various intensity adjustments here. I hope that's coming out on the camera. Uh, you should be able to see as I uh, increase speed up the time base on this one, I can see that there's a highlighted spot on the trace at the top there. Let me turn that up a bit so you can see it better. Um, and I can adjust the delay time here. You'll notice that there's a section highlighted in the trace and this is reading out the delay time from the trigger point to the start of that highlighted section. So it's just 0.952 milliseconds here, which is useful to know if you're measuring a waveform exactly. So if, you know, if I was to position it right on the edge there, 0.983 milliseconds, so it's slightly faster than one kilohertz. Um, now, having highlighted that, I can put it into alternating mode, which displays the second time base at the same time. Um, there's a uh, trace separation. There we go, look, I can position that. Uh, also, might, let me turn that up and that down a bit. You should be able to see everything. So now we're seeing time base B, which is running at five microseconds per centimetre. But that starts when time, the t delay expires on time base A. So we can actually move that highlighted section up. And you can see at the same time an expanded view of the highlighted part. And we can move that view around with this. So if I go and look at the falling edge over here, you can see it there. I hope this is coming out nice and clearly on the camera. It's difficult to get the brightness set right. Um, so that's fairly normal scope delayed time base facility. 
What's really good with this is that there's a delta time measurement as well. If you want to know, for example, the length of a pulse, uh, let's try measuring the length of this sort of lump of the square wave. If I uh, put the um, delta mode on, we've now got three traces on the screen. It starts to get a bit crowded, but um, and we can adjust the delta time. So we've now got two highlighted sections on the screen. If I just turn that down a bit, you should be able to see them. And I can adjust the delta time to highlight a second segment of the waveform. And if, for example, I'm interested in the width of this pulse, I can use the delta time to exactly line up these two traces with each other, to line up the two edges. And I can, in fact, use this trace separation control to line them up. So I'd say that was pretty spot on. Let's try that just for good measure. So now I know that the time between those two things is 0.492 of a millisecond. I've got a precise measurement of the length of that section of the trace. So you can do some really quite powerful measurements uh, with, uh, with the dual time base here. And as I'll show in a, in a moment or two, uh, you can actually use two time bases to show two different traces at the same time, which is quite nice. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do now, having demonstrated the time base, is just show you um, that the mainframe is uh, calibrated and what the rise time is. If I put it back to a normal time base mode, we'll just use time base A for now. And if I take this uh, probe out, what I'm going to do is remove this vertical plug-in. Just pop that up there. And for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to put in this, which is a Tektronix uh, signal standardizer. It's a calibration fixture. Uh, this generates its own signals internally for testing the mainframe, so it can be done independently of the um, uh, of the the the, the, uh, the plugins. So if I uh, put it on the gain setting, turn the intensity up a bit, and adjust that, you can see this creates a sort of grid of lines on the screen which should line up with the lines on the graticule and uh, it may be a bit hard to work out but to, to make out uh, if I, I turn the graticule illumination up it probably doesn't help very much um, but uh, you have to take my word for it those line up perfectly with the graticule so the mainframe is uh, is the gain is adjusted correctly and so on so interchangeability of plugins should be no problem other thing we can do with this is uh, measure the step response of the mainframe to look at its bandwidth if I put it on that mode and uh, line it up with the 100% markers on the screen, like that. And then what we want to do is speed up the time base so we can see the, uh, this is a, a waveform with a very fast pulse response in it. And, uh, and what I need to do is put this at the fastest speed that the mainframe will support in a calibrated way. And that is a very fast edge, and this is showing the rise time of the mainframe. So from 10% to 90%, uh, I reckon that's of the order of 1.2 millisecond. Oh, sorry, 1.2 nanoseconds. And um, using the usual formula, 350 divided by the rise time in nanoseconds, that gives a mainframe bandwidth of 290 megahertz, which is uh, pretty good going for this one. That's well uh, exceeding its uh, factory spec. Um, so uh, that's that's working very nicely. Uh, what I can also do is, because we've now got this extra signal source, I can show you how we can use the two time bases to view two independent signals at the same time on the same screen, which is a good trick that very few scopes can actually do, and it means you've effectively got two scopes in one box. What I'm going to do is put uh, use time base A to view the right-hand uh, trace, which is uh, that one, and I'll just shrink it down a bit so we can leave it down there. Then I'm going to use time base B on an entirely different uh, time base setting. Um, now let, let's first of all get a good view of this uh, this waveform on time base A, uh, something like that. And, uh, so there we go. That is the waveform from the calibrator. It's a sort of one megahertz square wave. Now we're going to use time base B. Let's set it up to have a look at. Uh, the internal calibrator waveform, which is you know one kilohertz, so entirely different frequency, totally unrelated uh, in time and in phase and in frequency. Um, that, so that's the internal calibrator. Now we've got these two independent ones. So uh, so now what I'm going to do, if I put uh, the 
put that alternating and put chop on the time bases and set the trigger incorrectly so that that one's triggering there, that one's triggering there. So we've now got two signals which are totally unrelated, uh, both viewable at the same time, and you can adjust the intensity of each of them relative to the other. So we can fiddle about with um, the frequency of each of them to get a you know, different, different view. But now this uh, trace is being uh, viewed with this time base, and this one is being with this time base, uh, and they're both on screen at the same time, uh, even though they're unrelated. And to demonstrate they're unrelated, if I, for example, trigger them both from the um, uh, um, from one signal, you can see that well, actually that disappears because it's uh, uh, it's out of sync. Um, but um, this trace is running at 200 nanoseconds per centimeter, and this one is running at 200 microseconds per centimeter. So that trace is actually a thousand times faster than this one, and yet the scope is able to display them both on the screen quite comfortably. In fact, if I turn it down, you'll see them even better. Uh, quite comfortably at the same time. Uh, so that's a pretty good, uh, a good trick. Um, last thing I'll do is show you the rise time through the uh, plug-in. Uh, if I switch off and remove the standardizer, put the plug-in back in so we get back to the standard setup. Um, uh, we'll just use Prime Base B for this one. And what I have on this piece of wire here is a high-speed pulse generator with a very fast rise time. I'll connect that up to, uh, to there and uh, display that. And I just need to get that triggering properly and speed this up. It's sort of 100 kilohertz ish signal and it's got a very fast rise pulse on the leading edge. So again, we'll go all the way to two nanoseconds per centimeter and we have to crank up the intensity to see it. But this is uh, a fast input signal through the plug-in, so it shows the bandwidth of the whole scope system. Again, if I line that up against the um, uh, markers here, you can see it's 10% to 90% is happening in almost exactly two nanoseconds, uh, maybe a whisker less. So that's a bandwidth of around 180 megahertz or thereabouts. Uh, which is again well within the spec uh, for this uh, this particular mainframe with this particular plug-in. Um, so that's the, the bandwidth of the whole thing. Um, so um, yep, yeah, that's the uh, 7704A mainframe with its two 7A26 plugins, demonstrating as far as I can all of the uh, the features. Um, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's in working order. I hope you enjoyed watching.